It's reaction time. Andy Elliott challenging tough objections. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. Today, I'm joined by the famous Elizabeth. As we react to Andy Elliott's video, Andy challenges a salesman with tough objections. Keep in mind that Andy posted this video in September of 2020. This is his new stuff. He's teaching people in his 10,000 square foot training facility. So if you think uh, this stuff isn't coming your way, well, think, think again. again. Yes. Keep track of something here. Let us know if you think Andy or anyone that he has on this video ever says any relevant substance. Stuff that perfectly honest people say if you were asking them for help. He always calls this kind of stuff world-class customer service and serving customers at the highest level possible. So watch and let us know if anything gets close to those kinds of lofty goals. All right, let's roll Andy Elliott dealing with tough objections. With that being said, let's go ahead and hit my man right now with some objections. Let's get the ball rolling. Okay, cool. So, uh, hey Ryan, man, look, you know, I'm looking around, dude. Honestly, I was just only interested in the car that you just sold. Yeah, so when we put these cars on the front line, they sell very fast. The car you were actually asking about, it had some scratches on the rear door panel. If it was available, I would have told you, it's probably not your sharpest pick. But let me ask you this, if I could show you a newer vehicle with lower miles that was actually in a better price range, would that upset you at all? No, that wouldn't upset me. Great, so you're pretty much open, you just wanna find something similar and get a great deal, am I right? Yeah, that's right. Fantastic, well, I got hundreds just like them. I'll walk through them with you. He said something right here that's really, really key. We've got hundreds that are just like them. So never forget when you're on a car lot and a salesman is telling you how unique a car is and three or four people are coming in on it, they got hundreds of them just like it. Right. Don't forget that. The other thing is, what do you think the chances are? Like he described this car and said it had scratches on the door and wasn't your best pick. What are the chances are that was completely a bullface That was light? completely made up. It was part of a rehearsed word track. And in the end, it's completely your decision. Is that fair? Hey, good job, dude. Hey, that's a nice word it's a track. Good one, baby. That's word a nice track. one. By the way, could we use that same word track on the phone? Yep, absolutely. On yes. the lot or on the phone. Hey, do me a favor. So not one sincere word came out of that whole sentence. That was a trained word track. I want you to do this, okay? Slow down. Okay. Okay. Word tracks are meant to be tattooed on your heart. Am I right? Right. Okay. Well, if I hang you upside down. And I'm waterboarding, I'm slapping him around, I'm doing whatever. I'm like, spell your name, give me your address. He can say it. You know why he can wow. say that stuff? Because it's actually true. Like right. your name and your address, all that other kind of stuff. That's true. You don't have to try to memorize a word track, but this is what he's talking about right here. He wants those word tracks so natural to these guys that the words sound real. But yet, when you're interacting with the salesperson out on the car lot, a lot of the words that they're saying to you aren't real at all. Now let's listen because he's asking him to slow this down. Let's see how close this was to that shotgun approach he started in the beginning. But most people can't handle objections that way because they really don't know it because they're winging it. Yeah. Would you do me a favor? Slow it down. With, just, just slow down the word track. I'm, I, I was only interested in the car you just sold. Say it okay. to me. So when we put these cars on the front line, they sell very fast. The car you were calling about or asking about actually had some scratches on the rear door panel. Look. <laughs> right there. He said the exact, exact same, same word. So it's just a rehearsed line, completely BS. If it was available, I would have told you it's probably not your sharpest pick. But let me ask you this. If I could show you a newer vehicle with lower miles that was actually in a better price range, would that upset you at all? And they're always gonna say no. Or they say, yeah, that would upset me. Yeah. No, they're gonna say no, and then you say. Great, so you're pretty much open. You just wanna find something similar and get a great deal, am I right? Right, there you go, that's it. That's how you overcome it. So he's playing it. the yes game, right? He's ask a question, get the customer to say yes, and that is the start of a car sale. And anything you throw to him, any comments you throw to him are always gonna be, well, let me ask you this, let me ask you this, let me ask you this. Watch how many times that comes out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. I got two yeses, the sale can't be closed. There you go, Elizabeth, exactly. nailed it. I got two yeses. Until it's open, now just reopen their mind. Yep. There's a word track, that's the power of training. All right, let's move to the next one. Okay, hey man, you know, Ryan, look dude. Hey, so Ryan, so let's have walking on the line. Hey, let's say I'm walking out of service. All right, I'm walking out of service, okay? I'm walking out to one of the vehicles and Ryan walks up to me and says, hey, what's up Andy? I say, hey man, 
Ryan, I'm just wasting my time, man. I'm not here to buy anything. Got my car in service. Yeah. I'd say, look, Andy, obviously there's a thousand different things you could be doing other than looking at vehicles today. You being here checking these vehicles out lets me know you're not 100% satisfied with the vehicle you drove up in. What is one thing, just one thing, you could change about your current vehicle you don't like right now? Right here, you guys, keep in mind that if you're taking your vehicle to a dealership to have it serviced, this is exactly the kind of stuff that you're going to get from these guys. Exactly. They're going to be on you like, you know, flies on dog crap and, and, and trying to sell you a car because you're at the dealer for service. They actually train this in the sales classes. They're all like, who's going to service today? So yep. never forget that. No, probably that it don't have a sunroof if there's one thing. Great. So if we could find one with the sunroof and actually keep your payment about the same, is that something you'd consider today? Same payment? Yeah. Oh, sales open. Boom. See that? Hook them. Guys, I'm wasting time. I'm not here to buy. He says, hey, man, I get it totally. I understand. By the way, we always agree first, right? Look, if you don't agree with the customer, we don't have anywhere to go. Yeah. Hey, I understand. Totally. That is a great point because you'll always find that these people are very agreeable. And when you're talking to somebody that's agreeable, it feels like they get you. So remember the psychological yeah. advantage it gives them when they agree with you. And all of a sudden you think this guy actually gets you and he doesn't. Well, get it. However, right. However, however. If you were here, right, there's lots of things that you could be doing. It shows me that you're not 100% satisfied with the vehicle that you grow, drove up in. I mean, it just shows me that you're not because you wouldn't be here if you were. You might be 99% satisfied, but you're not 100%. And by the way, if you're going to make a payment, would it rather be on a car that you're 100% satisfied with or a yeah. car that you're 99% satisfied with? I would probably choose the 100% satisfied with if I had to make a payment and you're making a payment, right? Okay, cool. So I was just saying, right? Let's figure out what it is. If there's one thing you could change about your vehicle that you currently have now, what would that one thing be? I'm going to let him talk. I'm going to fish out those answers. Yeah. And guess what? I'm going to create a pain point, push on it and close them. Boom. You see that? Pain point and push on it and close them. It has nothing so, to do with honesty. That's just all about getting a sale. Manipulating the person, manipulating your emotional state you might find yourself in right now and planting this idea in your head that you need a car and you're just there for service. The cell can't be opened until, or the cell can't be closed until it's open. You gotta open it, okay? All right, number three, guys. And by the way, we're kind of teaching you in between the word tracks so you fully understand them and then you get the psychology of selling, okay? The psychology of selling. Yep. All right, and you get how, how powerful word tracks are during objection handling. Okay. Hey, I like the car, Ryan. I mean, I'm, you know what? I just, I'm not sure I want to take one with that many miles on it. Yeah. I understand how the miles can seem a little bit high, but let me ask you this. I mean, if you drove both vehicles for a three year period, which one would you end up owing more money on? The one with lower miles or the one with a bit higher miles? Well, probably the one with lower miles because it would cost more money. Yeah. So going with our vehicle today with a little higher mileage, the biggest part of the depreciation cycle, Andy, has already been taken into consideration. Hey, I stand corrected. These guys actually said something honest. I stand corrected. <laughs> so buy cars that are three to five years old, somewhere in that neighborhood, something with a little bit more miles on it, but you know has a good maintenance record. So cars that you know are reliable. But if you want to save the most amount of money, buy a car that has a few miles on it and the worst part of the depreciation is passed. So this is actually a legitimate point. I'm, I'm stunned. So when you look at the bigger picture, Andy, going with our vehicle today with just a little bit higher mileage, is definitely the smartest way to go if you're looking to save some big money now and later. Mm, that makes sense. It, it does make sense, actually. That's, <laughs> That's funny. Good observation, all right. See that? Hey guys, I get it, man. Look, my car's got 80,000 miles on it. Let me ask you this, you said 80,000. The only thing I would add to all of that is that it's something that you as a car buyer should have been thinking about before. Don't let these guys feed these lines to you and then you're starting to go on, yeah, that makes sense and this other piece makes sense. Don't do that. Do your own research beforehand. Already be aware of these depreciation cycles and stuff like that. You know, just go out there being an informed car buyer, but don't let these guys be the source of your information. Too high? What kind of miles would you like it to have? I'm just asking. Well, I'd like it to have 50. Okay, cool. Hey, let's say if we took a 50,000 mile car and the 80,000 mile car, mm -hmm. truck, car, whatever they're looking at, right? And you say, and you drove them for a three year period of time, right? Mm -hmm. In three years, you're going to trade them both back in, right? Whichever one you owned. Mm -hmm. Which one do you think you'd owe more money on? The, the one with 80,000 miles? No, because you got a better deal on that today because the biggest part of the depreciation has already been taken into consideration. It would be the one that you, you bought with 50,000 miles. 
But guess what? At the end of three years, do they both have 100,000 miles on them? Yes, they do. And in your trade cycle, when's the last time? He did some really bad math here because if you're starting with this newer low mile car and you put 30,000 miles on it, or you start with a car with the 50,000 miles and you put 30,000 miles on it, which car has more miles on it? The one that started with more miles on it? Bingo. So I don't know how you figured that one out, Andy, but little bad math, maybe beef up on the uh, math education. That you went and talked to a, a salesperson and he actually talked to you about the purchase you were making today and the, tr the future trade cycle when you're trading that back, you never. So for the first time in your life, you get to understand that you can actually beat the negative equity cycle yeah. by doing business with me on a You can also rate. beat the negative equity cycle by not buying a car when you don't need one bingo or doing these zero down ridiculous term deals as well put as much cash into the car as you can and you'll never have to deal with negative equity and you'll never need gap insurance either so another huge expense saved a vehicle like this with higher miles mm -hmm. have a lower payment pay less money for it and in the end not be upside down exactly man have you ever won the lottery have you just did <laughs> come on man <laughs> guys come on Life is changing forever. We are changing the automotive industry daily. Hey, you know what? We're changing the automotive industry daily as well. And thanks for putting all these videos out here, Andy, because we're changing the industry from the honest side of things by helping car buyers. And he thinks he's changing the business by feeding people or teaching people more of these lines of BS. I'd have to say that's actually just making, keeping everything just the same. The same old predatory business model the car business has always had. This right here, this is the lost art of sales. And so many people... <laughs> the, the lost art of sales. Yeah, go over to Steve Richards' channel and you'll find this same lost art of sales. Heavy on the lost. Yes, very lost. Try to mock, copy, they don't care. Guys, my training program is teaching salespeople how to go make three to $400,000 a year. You know why? Because I have one motive. It's you. Wait I'll a second. You guys. He said people are mocking him for his sales training, but to be perfectly honest, we're not mocking anything. We're just showing you what he's telling people and then showing you how it's not honest. And we stand with honesty and that's a bit more, has a bit more integrity with it. Bingo. Rock and roll, keep up the training. By the way, hey, if you like the video, right, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Also, if you like my man Ryan right here and he's doing a good job, do me a favor. Get comment below, let him know how he's doing. And by yeah. the way, if you love the role play videos. I have a question for you, Elizabeth. How would you like to run into one of these two people on a car lot? <laughs> um, I'd have to shut them down right away and they probably wouldn't want to do business with me because they're so entrenched in their way of thinking. Um, I just want to talk to a real person who's not like a plastic banana. Exactly. Do me a favor, share it with a friend. Do that for me. It really helps my YouTube ag uh, algorithm, okay? I would ask that for you guys. Hey, help me and I'll continue to help you by putting out tons of free content. Like, subscribe, share it with a friend. Yeah. Rock and roll, guys. I appreciate you, okay? So like, subscribe, share the homework content with your friends and we'll beat Andy's stuff. Well, we are really burying him. I think we're at least 300,000 subscribers ahead of Andy. So I think we're doing pretty good. All right, with that being said, um, thanks for the test drive, okay? But I'm just looking, Ryan. So I just, I, I literally just got out of this 2018 Toyota. Pay attention, you guys, because think of how many of you go out and you're just looking at cars, trying to take a test drive. We tell you all the time that you should go test drive cars, but go home. So pay close attention. He's going to deal with the just looking line. Corolla, it's got 30,000 miles. So, hey man, Ryan, I really like the car. Thanks for the test drive, man. But if you could just give us your card, you know, we're just kind of looking. Yeah. Everybody has to start somewhere. First you start with looking, then you find something that you like. Guys, once you find something that you like, it's extremely important to find someone who's gonna make you an amazing deal. Look, that's me, okay? It's not a matter of if you're gonna buy, but when you buy. And when you buy is when the deal is right, am I right? Yeah, right. Exactly. So let me show you a five-minute proposal I guarantee you can't say no to. Follow <laughs> me inside. This is going to blow you away. Yeah, this is the go inside and sit down, and you've started the next part of the process. If you never go inside, you're not stuck with that. And he said five minutes. How much is this five minutes he's talking about? It's usually an hour. <laughs> if, if they're nice, it might be two hours, three hours. You guys know you've been at dealerships stuck for hours on end. So this five minutes, never believe that story. 
There you go. Good job, man. Move through the objection. Rock and roll. All right. So this this is going to be one right here that all salespeople lock up with, okay? Yeah. And by the way, I see managers lock up with it. If someone's getting a better rate at their bank and you can't match it or beat it, it's just they're going to get a better rate. When you give them a draft, there's a good chance that they'll end up buying something else and not ever coming back and bringing your check. You know. When you get a better rate at your own bank, always go with your own bank. Yeah. 100% of the time, go with your own bank. If you don't get a finance contract and you just get a one pay, they don't have to return. I'm just gonna say, you could deliver me. <laughs> Good note, you don't have to return when you're dealing with your own banker and you get this one pay or check from the bank. Yeah, you don't have to return. You don't have to come back and listen to more of this tripe. In the car all you want, you can't cash that contract. You need a financeable contract, okay? You need to be able to go and say, hey, I get it. You know, our rate's not the best. However, and then handle it with the word track and keep their bank out of it. They might have them going to their bank and their bank says, hey, man, I think you're paying a little too much for the car. Yeah. Hey, I didn't. <laughs> that is great. Your banker will tell you you're paying too much for your car if you are. And why? Because they have the ability to book that car out too. So the banker's going to give you honest information. Let's see why Andy has such a big problem with this. Think you got ruin enough for yours and ruin the whole deal. Ruin Guys, the deal. People say, well, I just send it to their bank. Oh, really? How many banks end up ruining deals for us because you got <laughs> some smart mouth banker out there that's telling us how much they know? Oh, a smart mouth banker. Here, the smart mouth Andy Elliott teaching people BS thinks that a honest customer going to get honest advice from a banker is talking to this smart mouth banker. That is really- Because the banker has a vested interest in you not going bankrupt. He wants his money back, so he's gonna be smart about it. Exactly, exactly. And Andy could care less if you default on this loan down the road. When they really don't know nothing, they're just running their mouth trying to be cool to their client. Yeah, yeah I'm not interested, okay? They really Let's don't know anything. Guy. All right, cool. So hey, so hey, Ryan. Yeah, they have loan officers sitting in these banks all the time that know absolutely nothing. They're just smart mouths that don't know anything and they run their mouth ruining car deals for guys like Andy at the dealership. He'd say the same thing about the homework guy. I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> Listen, man, I love the truck. Mm -hmm. I, I'm okay with the price. Um, but my bank, I mean, you said you could get me 599 interest. Um, my bank's going to get me 499. So I just want to go see my banker. They're getting me a better rate and then I'll come back and do everything. Yeah. So 99% of my clients, just like you who have great credit, Andy, don't like to put all their eggs in one basket. Look, it's always beneficial to diversify your loans with different institutions. Guys, we use nationwide lenders that report to all three bureaus in all 50 states. It looks much better on your credit and the slight difference in payment is nearly nothing, especially for you making great income like you do. Okay, good. So I don't think that was on. I don't think that I think that was a lie. That was a big bold face lie is what Serious. that was. So he's making it sound like diversity in your financial portfolio, like who you owe money to or the types of loans that you have. Well, if you're familiar with installment credit versus revolving credit, um, he's trying to make it sound like your own credit union. Uh, wouldn't report to FICO like their bank, like Chase would or some other bank. And that's just pure nonsense. That is a bold faced lie. Do you think I should maybe go to my bank or should I stay here? What should I do? Yes, you should go to your bank, Andy. <laughs> we should diversify your loans with different institutions. That way, when you go to trade your vehicle in, the banks will see, hey, you actually used a nationwide lender instead of just a small local credit union. Like I said, it looks much better on your credit. And whether you're buying a home, buying a boat, whatever, whatever you do decide to buy, you know, you're future. never going to have to allow, you know, a financial institution to dictate what you buy in the future. Guess what? A banking relationship is so important. So when he's talking about not going to your local credit union, if you go to your local credit union and get the car, and then later you go back and do a loan for a boat, and later you go back to do a loan for a house, who do you think is a hundred times more likely to help you instead of putting you into some financial box and deciding whether they want to work with you or not. You go to these so-called nationwide banks that he's referring to, that's how people become a number and yep. you mean nothing to those banks. So first of all, it's completely dishonest to say that a credit union car loan doesn't build your credit like a car loan would through a, a, a dealership. 
That is completely nonsense. And for anybody who wants to look up types of credit, look up, for example, revolving credit. That could be a home equity line of credit. It could be a credit card. It could be a line of credit that you're using for business. Those are all revolving credit. Then you have installment loans in which you start with a fixed dollar. That would be like your mortgage. That would be like your car loan. They don't differentiate between, you know, was this a good lender or was this a local lender or was that a national lender? Baloney. If it's not your grandma, it's probably fine, huh? Yes. So <laughs> look up any information on how to build your credit and the, the types of credit you should use to diversify your credit portfolio. And what he just said is 100% false. Yeah, because you're gonna have stellar credit. Exactly. Which is why people choose to use us versus their own institutions. A lot of these little banks, guess what happened? Even, uh, they're not in all 50 states. Let me ask you this. So what bank do you use? Oh, ABC Bank. Hey, guess what? If you go get a car loan from a little itty, itty, bitty, bitty bank in Florida, and then you move all the way over to the other side of the coast, let's say now you're in Colorado, guess what? That car loan from that itty bitty bank in Florida is going to follow you all the way over there. It's going to be on your credit report. It goes through all the credit agencies. Contact any one of the credit reporting agencies, and they'll tell you, we don't care where you get a loan from. That's going to be on your credit report yep. around the United States. So BS, Andy, stop telling the lie. Okay, cool. Let me ask you, sir. Is ABC Bank in all 50 states? No. No? Our, our banks are. I'm just saying at the end of the day, you're going to buy tons of more stuff in your life. Would you agree? Yep. Okay. So you're a 750. Why aren't you an 850? Mm. Uh... Because you aren't making very smart credit choices is why you haven't gone from a 780 to a 750. Or you're overusing lines of credit or things like that. But it has absolutely nothing to do with where your car loan is at. Nothing. Uh, okay. All right. So would you agree you're okay with scaling your credit to a high level? Would it be worth it to pay a little bit more in payment if you knew you could even get your credit greater? Would that be worth it to you? Yeah. Hey, then guess what? Let's pass go. Let's wrap this deal up. There you go, guys. Move, 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 move. Get through the objection. Move, 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 because you don't want to deal with truth. Mm -hmm. Get on with the deal. Wrap it up. Okay, guys, six and seven. These are great ones. Six is going to be awesome. If you do subprime in your store, if you deal with people with damaged credit, less than perfect credit, bad credit, whatever, however you want to call it, this is a great one. Okay. All right, Ryan. So, hey, whoa, man. Gosh, Ryan, what, what is my rate? Ryan goes back, talks to the manager. Maybe it's on the paper. says, hey, Andy, your rate's 21%. Hey, maybe it's 15%. This could be used for anything. Change the rate. Use the word track. Uh, Ryan, I, I don't want to pay 21%. Yeah, I understand you don't want to pay 21%, Andy, but do you know the only way we're going to fix 21%? is you signing right here on the dotted line and starting your credit reestablishment program today so that in a year from now, two years from now, you don't ever have to pay a rate like that ever again in your entire life from today forward. What if your car gets repossessed in two years because you can't afford it? You like can't afford it at 21%. And think of how many of these loans and these really high interest rates, the percentage of them that are, that are repossessed is really, really high. So come on, let's get a little truth out here, boys. There you go, guys. That's it, That's man. Simple. That's it. No, yap, yap, yap. Would you please repeat? Hey, Ryan. <laughs> no, yap, yap, yap. When all we heard was yap, 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 and nothing that was true. I don't want to pay a rate that high. Mm -hmm. Look, Andy, I understand you don't want to pay 21% or that high rate, but look, the only way we're going to fix 21% is you signing on the dotted line right now, starting your credit reestablishment program today so that in a year from now or the next vehicle you buy you don't ever have to pay a rate like that ever again in your entire life from today forward our viewers would know that you don't start your credit repair with a car loan you should be working on this six to 12 months before you even try to get a car totally agree with that <laughs> in fact i don't actually do very much with credit at all because i'm a cash customer so what is something that i do on a regular basis to help keep my credit score high what do i do we do cash secured loans bingo teach that to all of our staff um, you, you put your cash to the credit union, they give you a loan that same amount of cash, you might end up paying $20 on a $2,000 loan. That is worth it to repair your credit score. There you go. Start that early. Don't wait until you're standing in front of somebody like this and signing on a 21% loan. That is nonsense. That's it, guys. That's it. You memorize that. I promise you eight out of 10, you'll lock up. You gave them an answer yep. and then move through it. Okay. So with that being said, do you mind if I got your great rates on everything else you bought for the rest of your life? And we start today getting your great credit. Would that be cool? That All right, guys, let's rock and roll. <laughs> hey, guys. Let's rock and roll. This is like a MLM seminar.
Yikes. <laughs> Guys, they just bought a new vehicle. <laughs> ring, ring, ring. Guys, move through it. Overcome, move through it. Don't stick to the objection. Don't say... You know what? Don't stick to the presentation, you guys. I know. You should be gone by now. Seriously. Yep, lo gone long time. You know, we're going through this video because we want you guys to hear these various objections, but don't ever listen to this kind of nonsense. Take control right off the bat and then just get them down a different path. But do not listen to this kind of nonsense. So is that okay? Could mm -hmm. we go forward? Can we do that? Yeah. Is that okay with you? Nah, man. You're the expert. You're the expert. So he's making it sound like anybody who actually would ask legitimate questions of the customer is just being a softy. Take the customer through it, okay? Don't stick to the objection. All right, guys, number seven. I don't want a car payment because my car's paid off. By the way, if you- Smart people don't want a car payment. Very smart people. If you like the video and you like everything Ryan has gone through with you, yeah. Ryan is an incredible word track coach. Ryan works- Word track coach. Remember that word track coach for me. I've got four or five savages that work for me. <laughs> savages, savages. So are you hoping you actually run into a customer who, or I, I should say, are you hoping you run into a car salesman who actually gets customer service? Or are you hoping you run into this guy who's known as a savage? They're some of the best coaches in the world. They're my guys. I brought them up from the ground up. They're not trainers. I'm your trainer. They're your coach. Yeah. These guys are products of my training. Mm -hmm. I run them every morning for 20, 25 minutes of role play every single day. Let's rock and roll. This is going to be number seven. Hey, Ryan, man, I really like the 18 Toyota Corolla. You know, it's a nice car, but you know, my car's paid off right now. I, I don't really know if I actually want to have a payment. Okay. Yeah. So would you agree that your car would be worth a little bit more money today? and less tomorrow. Yeah, so you sure. see, the longer you wait, Andy, the less equity you have in a vehicle. Therefore, the less down payment you have towards a new vehicle, and the more time something to go wrong with your current vehicle. And you're probably waiting to get the best deal, am I right? Yeah. And if having a low payment is important to you, pulling the trigger right now is exactly what will secure that lower payment. You can also have a lower payment if you just put your money into a savings account and then actually be disciplined enough to leave it there. And boom, there's your cash down payment. A little financial discipline is much smarter than anything he's proposing. Bam, guys. He said pulling the trigger right now is actually what would secure the lowest payment that you're ever gonna have, mm -hmm. doing it now. Why? Because do you think your car would be worth more today or more tomorrow? Obviously more today. And let me ask you a question. Let's say that you didn't trade it today, you didn't have a payment, but you kept the car tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Let's just say something did break and you have to spend $1,000 on it. Let me ask you a question. Do you think your car would become worth 1000 more? No. You'd potentially find yourself, or you would find yourself spending $1,000, wasting money, and your car's worth whatever it's worth as long as it's running. Yeah. So guess what? You actually end up spending more money, and if you actually spend that money, I mean, that really, in all essence, is a payment. Yeah. Okay? It's not a monthly payment. All right, we got to stop this guy right here because he's trying to make it sound like owning a car without payments is gonna end up costing you the same amount of money as having a car with a car payment. Now, I've had vehicles for years with no payments. How about yeah, you? Same thing, I would pay cash. Okay, and, and how much more do those vehicles cost you during the time of ownership? So are you like forking out money to repair these cars nonstop? <laughs> it might be once a year something happens, but that's one payment or two, not 12. You'll always run the math on this. Go over to watch Dave Ramsey's shows. You'll find out that financially you're ahead every single time owning a car that you don't have payments but wait, on. wait, he didn't even bring up extended warranties. <laughs> <laughs> but well, wait, yes, all right. It's a fixed payment when your car breaks. It's probably an older model. It's paid off. He's leaving that for the finance guys. Yeah. Yep. So what that means is not wanting a payment. You're talking about a monthly payment you'd pay to the bank, but we know you do probably have an ownership payment yeah. because you have to pay for it when it breaks because it's probably out of warranty, okay? Exactly. My ownership payment on my vehicles compared to car payments is probably about 20%. Yeah. 20%, if that. So the fact is you, stu you still do have a payment. Okay, you work hard for your money, you put your money in the bank. When the money leaves the bank, that's real money spent. Whether the money leaves the bank to go pay for the car in a service shop or go pay for it with the monthly payment, would you agree it's still a payment either way? Yeah, so if you're gonna be making a payment, would you rather be paying it on the older car or the newer one? Which one? The newer vehicle. Okay, cool, and doing it today, your car's worth the most money? Well, don't you agree that, that putting that down towards your down payment since you don't have a, a payment? Don't you agree today would actually secure the lowest payment? Okay, we, we, we gotta stop, I can't take any more. <laughs> 
yeah, this is just getting way, way, way off the hook, and we got to stop. And they are moving a herd of elephants on the upper floor of our shop today, so if you hear all that, um, that's what it is. Everybody's having a good time. So, uh, any closing thoughts here on this video? We have to stop it right here. I can't watch any more of this. I think with any objection that you give the give the salesman that's doing this Andy Elliott training, when you hear that answer come back to you sweet as honey, you got to know something's wrong with that. Um, if your logic is not working and your emotions are, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Totally wrong place, wrong time. So take control right in the beginning. Don't let these guys control you with all these word tracks and you throw things to them and they go, well, I hear what you're saying, but let me ask you this. They're, they're always pretending like they're agreeing with you and then immediately following that statement. Well, let me ask you this. That's when the word track rolls. So don't get fooled by this stuff. Don't ever buy into these word tracks. Control your car deal from beginning to end. By the way, we just posted a video customer controls the deal and gets a kick butt deal on his truck. Make sure you check out Antonio Suarez on our channel. All right, if you guys appreciated our reaction video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your social media platforms out there. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website. But here's the deal. If you really want to help us out, and you want to help yourself and your friends become the luckiest people on the planet when it comes to car deals, well then, help us get the word out, share these videos with your friends, and encourage other people to subscribe too because our subscribers, they're the luckiest people in the world when it comes to car deals. Mm -hmm. And your great luck helps bring fairness and honesty to the car business. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter here with Elizabeth. Sorry, Andy, but... There was just no real way to sugarcoat this today. Really? World-class customer service and want to help you at the highest level? I think you just kind of missed the mark.